Oh, Jay Rose here, and today we're going to be talking about a paper called Trading Wages for Hours, Beneficial and Detrimental Inflation and the Risk of an Indeterminable Point. Um, it, inflation's this funny word that means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, for some people, it seems to mean just a general increase of the money supply. And for other people, it can mean an increase of the money supply over assets, hurting the spending power. So it's a very controversial term and kind of confusing. Um, but for me, I think a nice way to think of inflation is as as a kind of trade-off between wages and hours. And what I mean by that is imagine you worked for $10 an hour. And you only worked one um, hour, and so the maximum amount of money you can make is 10. And somebody came along and they said, okay, I tell you what, I'll, um, I'll give you two hours of work if you're willing to work for $9 instead of 10. And you go, well, of course, because I'm still making more money. I'm making 18 total. And you say, that's great. I'll do it. Well, someone else comes along and they say, hey, look, I'll give you uh, three hours for eight and you go, well, okay, well, that's 24 bucks, so that's still worth it. But you notice your margin is shrinking. You're, uh, you're not making as much uh, as, as you were per hour that you add. Someone else comes along and say, I'll do four hours for seven. And you go, eh, okay. But notice here when you get to five hours and they're going to give you six bucks. Well, the max you make there is 30. Don't get me wrong, at, up from the hour mark, you're making $20 um, total more, even though you're making more, less, less per hour. But notice here, if someone came along and said they would uh, give you $5 for six hours of work. Well, this would be completely irrational because you're actually now going to be working more for the same amount of money. And notice if someone comes along, comes along and says, I'll give you $4 for seven hours. Well, now you're going backwards. You're working more and making less. And... And, and so on until you get to, to, you know, someone offers you 10 hours of work for a dollar. And then, you know, you're, you, you're working, uh, you know, 10 hours to make one dollar. Um, well, to make ten dollars total. Uh, so you were way better off just to work the one hour when you made the ten. So notice what ends up, ends up happening here on a trade when you're trading wages for hours. And obviously this is general. Obviously inflation and how it manifests is far more complicated. But I think it's interesting to note following this graph, following this example, and you can find the graph on Medium on OGRose.com as well, is that inflation in a way is quite good up until the five-hour mark. You are making more money total even though you're working more. And if you want to, and if your goal is to make more money total, well, then up to five hours, you you've done it. Even though you you get less of um, a return per every step you make of the graph, but there's no doubt that inflation, if if this trade off is an accurate description of inflation, no doubt it works for a good while. But then, of course, notice that it it stops. And if for some reason you couldn't put the brakes on the process. Don't know why, but let, you know, if theoretically you couldn't put the brakes on the process, then you would actually start to digress in a very, um, in a very painful way. And so, you know, I think we need to move beyond um, thinking of inflation as good or, you know, as um, purely bad or purely good, and understand it's a trade-off for wages between wages and hours. And the reason it is, is because the government um, increases inflation or stimulates the economy by decreasing the spending power of the dollar through the um, process by which it makes money. So every time the government creates money, it reduces spending power, and that would be inflation. But So you're, so you're in essence getting less bang for your money whenever the government um, stimulates the economy. And, that, and the reason it stimulates the economy, though, is precisely to create opportunities of employment, to create jobs, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, in order to, um, to, to, to increase hours. And, and practically speaking... If your money buys less, then you are trading wages for hours. You are trading spending power for hours. And like we said, up to a point, it, it works It works well, and inflation can be beneficial. Um, but of course, the, the problem is that there is a point when inflation starts to uh, make you working more hours to get less return, and, and that's quite a problem. And also problematically, if up until the five-hour point in the, in the graph – You've been making money, then you have all, all evidence is going to tell you that you should keep doing the trade off because you've actually made more total money. Um, you've made more to total money as you've gone. So, all your evidence is going to tell you that it's worked, so you could keep going, and then you're going to fall off the cliff here, even though your, your, your previous trajectory would suggest that you would keep going up. Um, and then, of course, you don't even get into the question that when people realize that you know they're working a whole 
extra four hours to only get a return of 20 bucks, to only get a 50% return from their initial starting point of one hour for $10, they might start to get angry and you could have social unrest. But assuming, uh, well, I mean, people can get upset, but at least if you have an overall increase in, uh, in money, you know, then, uh, you know, the amount of money you have, then people can maybe um, stomach it. But certainly if it begins to uh, go backwards, that's gonna be a problem. And the big question we have to ask and if I understand Friedrich Hayek correctly, Hayek seems to suggest we are, it is, we're not capable of determining when the irrational point, the point where it's irrational to make the trade-off for wages for hours, it would seem as if Hayek thought we couldn't determine that. And if it is the case that we cannot determine when inflation um, becomes bad, when the, trade, when the trade-off of wages for hours becomes detrimental, if that is not a point that we can determine, then we really should think twice before we use inflation to stimulate the economy um, because we're, we could pass over a, a cliff and, and not realize it. Or maybe if it's the case that you can't stop inflation, maybe uh, political realities make it just too difficult to stop with the stimulus once it begins. Um, if that is the case, then we really want to be careful before we engage inflation, even though it is certainly the case that um, inflation does work for a bit. Uh, we, we would want to be careful uh, if political realities make it too difficult to stop. So anyway, um, you know, the paper gets into more. I just, um, you know, I've always been looking, this was just a way to kind of help understand why inflation is not purely good or purely bad, but to also bring up a point of uh, concern, a point of hesitancy before we're all in on inflation. So I think thinking of inflation as a trade trade a um, trade off between wages and hours is helpful. And for more uh, for more by OG Rose, please visit ogrose.com. And thank you for your time.